When eight-year-old Maddie went out to play, neither she nor her family expected that she would encounter a monster. However, when the true identity of this monster was revealed, what surprised everyone the most was that this monster was only 15. Madison Middleton was born on October 5, 2006, in Santa Clara, California. She was the daughter of Laura and Mike. The girl's parents divorced shortly after she was born but remained on good terms. They even agreed that Maddie would spend three days a week with her father. Laura and Maddie moved to Santa Cruz, a peaceful neighborhood specially designed for creative people known as the Art Center. When they set up this residential area, their goal was to bring together and house creative individuals. At that time, Maddie's mother was involved in sculpture and painting, and since housing prices were not too high, they moved to the art center. In this place, everyone knew each other, and residents described the area as very peaceful. Maddie was a cheerful and carefree girl who loved to play and spend time with other children. She easily made new friends and enjoyed going to school. Soon after her parents' divorce, Maddie's father remarried and a child was born in their marriage. Maddie got along very well with her father's new family. On July 26, 2015, tragedy struck the family's life. On that Sunday, Maddie was at home with her mother. At 4 p.m., she went out with her scooter to play with other kids, but when she was outside, she found herself alone as the other children had already gone home. At 5 p.m., the residential complex's security camera captured footage of the girl playing with her scooter in the courtyard alone around 5.30 p.m. However, she was not found afterward. She searched everywhere, and neighbors helped, but they couldn't find the girl. Laura reported her daughter missing at 6 p.m. The first thing the police did was call Maddie's father and ask if she had been with him. The police always check this because there are many cases where one parent abducts a child. But in Maddie's case, it was unlikely. Both parents were on very good terms despite being divorced. The police checked her father's home, but the girl wasn't there. They then launched a search, and hundreds of volunteers joined the police in the search for the girl. The next day, on July 27th, Maddie's body was found in a dumpster located in the same area of the art center. While the police were examining the scene, some strange events occurred. A 15-year-old boy who lived in the same residential complex kept asking the police if they had found the girl, if they had any suspects, and if they had found any evidence. The search for the boy lasted only one day, and during that time, he went to the police 15 times, which was very suspicious. When Maddie's body was found, the boy was also there. When he saw the police open the dumpster and find the body, he started running away, even though no one had told him anything. This was very suspicious, so the police chased him down and arrested him. The boy's mother was also there, and she began screaming and begging for her son to be released. His identity was established A.J. Gonzalez, originally from the Philippines. Neighbors said he was very calm and participated in the art center's community, always ready to help. Moreover, he often babysat neighbors' children and walked their pets. He had many friends, participated in hiking trips, art-related activities, and everyone loved him, so no one believed he could harm Maddie. However, despite the neighbors' attempts to prevent his arrest, the boy was taken to the police station for questioning. At the same time, a forensic examination was conducted, and it was determined that Maddie died from strangulation. Her body had several wounds and signs of violence. It was concluded that she had died due to the position in which she was left in the dumpster. She suffocated in that position when she was left there. 
When she was placed in the dumpster, she was still alive. During the interrogation, the teenager confessed to everything. Showing no signs of remorse, at the age of 15, he raped and murdered Maddie. The police were in shock. He told them what happened that Sunday. AJ went out onto the terrace of the apartment where he lived with his mother. Since she worked every day, he was home alone that weekend. He saw Maddie playing in the courtyard and decided to join her. They talked for a bit and AJ offered her ice cream. He said he needed to get it from the kitchen in his home. Maddie agreed to go with him. Of course, Laura had taught Maddie not to trust strangers and not to talk to them, but the problem was that AJ was someone she trusted. They played together, and he taught her yo-yo tricks. Several times, he even looked after her when her mother needed to step out in the evening. So, Maddie considered AJ her friend. They went into the house, but he didn't give her ice cream. Instead, AJ attacked Maddie. He raped her, then injured her, and according to his own words, attempted to strangle her, but he failed. Then he took trash bags, put her body in them, and covered it with garbage before taking it to the dumpsters. Afterward, he cleaned up the apartment before his mother returned. When the search for the girl began, he was cleaning the apartment where he had killed her. A few hours later, he went out to see what the neighbors were doing and even helped in the search. According to the police, the teenager was seen on CCTV footage three times. The first time was when he disposed of the girl's body, and the other two times were during the search. AJ tried to stay close to the dumpster, attempting to prevent anyone from getting too close. However, he couldn't be there 24-7 and his behavior was too suspicious. After gathering more information about the teenager, the police concluded that he was not the person his neighbors believed him to be. AJ and his mother had been living in this place for just over two years. Neither of them was involved in the arts, and it was unknown how they managed to buy this property. AJ had been registered at a psychiatric clinic, he had been hospitalized at his mother's request. At the age of 12, he had been cruel to a dog. According to his classmates, he had suicidal thoughts. Parents of one of his classmates had complained about him at school, stating that AJ had stalked a girl when she went to piano lessons. Other students had told teachers that the boy had planned a massacre at school. In both cases, the school authorities did not pay sufficient attention to these warnings. After his confession and the collection of evidence, it was decided that A.J. would be tried as an adult due to the severity of the crime. The hearings began in 2017. In November of that year, in court, the teenager claimed his innocence. His lawyer requested that he not be tried as an adult. This way, he could receive a shorter sentence, approximately 10 years, as juvenile offenders were supposed to be released at the age of 25 according to the law. They also tried to have him declared mentally unfit due to mental health issues. Maddie's family was outraged by this because they believed the teenager was a danger to society. Initially, the defense lawyers couldn't get either of their requests granted but AJ's trial continued. The judge gave Gonzalez the opportunity to apologize to Maddie's family. He was offered two options. He could write a letter that someone else would read in court on his behalf, or he could personally tell the girl's family that he regretted what had happened. However, AJ did not respond to either option. During the hearings, he often remained silent and only bowed his head. His lawyers answered questions for him. The judge considered this a lack of remorse since the teenager did not take the opportunity to apologize. 
The judge stated that he was glad he had made the decision to try him as an adult rather than a juvenile. However, in 2018, the course of the case changed dramatically due to a new law. California passed a law stating that no one under the age of 15 should be tried as an adult. Regardless of the crime committed, whether it was vandalism or murder, all individuals under 18 had to go directly to juvenile court. It is believed that this law was enacted because many criminal organizations used minors to commit murders while serving the shortest sentences possible. In some cases, minors were sent to adult court where they received very long sentences. It was believed that due to their age, they should have a chance at rehabilitation. The new law applied to all open cases, including A.J. Gonzalez's case, so he was transferred to juvenile court. This sparked much controversy since the law was intended for those who had become involved in criminal gangs at a very young age and needed help. This law was not supposed to apply to cases like A.J.'s. He was not part of any gang. He was an ordinary teenager. Furthermore, those around him had a positive opinion of him, so the prosecution believed the law should not have been applied in his case. But because the official law applied to all cases, AJ ended up in juvenile court. In 2019, an attempt was made to initiate an Amparo procedure, but it was rejected. The trial was scheduled for 2020, but due to the pandemic, it was postponed to 2021. On April 13th, 2021, AJ appeared in juvenile court for the first time. There, he pleaded guilty to Maddie's murder. Everyone was impressed. In adult court, he had claimed his innocence because he was afraid of the potential sentence. But knowing that juvenile court would not impose a lengthy sentence, he admitted his guilt. He was charged with murder and rape. Currently, AJ is 21 years old and can be released when he turns 25. If he had been tried in adult court, he would have had to spend his entire life in prison. Maddie's family expressed their dissatisfaction with the verdict. They did not provide comments to the press directly. This was done through their attorney. The lawyers say they will try to change the sentence, but it is almost impossible. Since this law applies to everyone, he will most likely be released in three to four years and continue to live a normal life. It is unknown whether he will commit crimes again. He already has a criminal record, suicidal tendencies, as he mentioned in school, and other issues. AJ must receive psychiatric treatment and undergo tests to determine whether he can reintegrate into society. This case seems disturbing due to the leniency of the sentence. It is unclear whether he will be able to lead a normal life when he is released. And yet, Maddie will never be given a chance to live again. She was only nine years old. Of course, this is very difficult for her family. Cases involving children are always tough, but this case remains marked by a sense of injustice. Often, the laws do not favor the victims in cases like these. 